Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, what's it like up there? Then your head swims at the idea of billions of stars in our galaxy. Then your mind stretches at the thought that there are billions of galaxies beyond our own. And as your mind expands, you feel increasingly small and stuck, bound by gravity. But we aren't stuck. We can travel throughout the universe through the extension of technology. And today, with the help of an internet connection, NASA, and the Juno spacecraft, we will make an epic journey to Jupiter. The Juno mission was selected in 2005 with the primary goal to understand the origin and evolution of Jupiter. The Juno spacecraft was built by Lockheed Martin and is the farthest traveling solar powered spacecraft ever using the largest solar array ever put on a spacecraft. And as it orbits Jupiter, it's only receiving 4% of the sunlight as we do here on Earth. The spacecraft has three panels each measuring 2.7 to 8.9 meters. Juno was launched in August 2011 from the ULA's Atlas V rocket. Do you ever travel somewhere and feel like you are going in circles or loops? Well, that's what Juno did to get to Jupiter. As you can see, it launched in 2011, reaching Earth's escape velocity, and then it takes a long arc past Mars orbit. And then in September 2012, it slightly changes its path back towards Earth. Then it flies past Earth in October 2013, where it receives a gravity assist boost and slings back out towards Jupiter, gaining close to 4 kilometers per second in speed. And as it approaches Jupiter, it reaches speeds of around 210,000 kilometers per hour. And then finally, you see it slow a little and it's captured by Jupiter's gravity and arriving in July 2016, ending a 2.8 billion kilometer trip. Since then, Juno has been making long, flat, 53-day orbits around Jupiter that takes the spacecraft right next to the planet. And traveling so close to the planet, Juno has been capturing the most astonishing images of Jupiter ever. Look at these color-enhanced, mesmerizing images. The pictures you see are ultra-close-up images taken from Juno as it was 4,000 to 10,000 kilometers from the clouds that you see. That may seem like long distances, but it's not next to Jupiter, which has a diameter of over 140,000 kilometers. Alright, aside from the awesome pictures, Juno has collected data that has changed what astronomers previously thought about the planet. First was Jupiter's poles. They found chaotic storm systems that were completely unexpected, which aren't found anywhere else in the solar system. And according to senior research scientist Mike Jansen, you're looking at a bunch of hurricanes, each one is the size of Earth, all packed together so tight that they're all touching together. On top of that, the poles have blue colors which aren't seen anywhere else on the planet. Along with the storm formations, it looks like a whole other planet compared to the pictures of Jupiter that we all grew up looking at. Another unexpected discovery was that Jupiter's core is much larger than previously believed and less dense. Third is that Jupiter's magnetic field is twice as strong as previously believed. Like Earth, Jupiter's magnetic field directs the solar wind towards the poles, creating auroras. And Juno measured Jupiter's auroras that have mysteriously hundreds of times more energy than auroras on Earth because the measurements don't match mathematical calculations. But what's more mysterious, or spooky even, is that Juno recorded the radio signals from Jupiter's auroras and then the signals were shifted to audio frequency, allowing us to listen to what auroras sound like on Jupiter. Listen. The spooky sounds remind me of the OA when Prairie and Hap listen to the rings of Saturn. It's just incredible. 
Okay, another fascinating discovery came from Juno's microwave radio meter or MWR. With Juno's MWR, we are able to peek underneath Jupiter's cloud tops for the first time. And we found that the great spot goes 50 to 100 times deeper than Earth's oceans and is warmer at the base than it is at the top. The MWR also revealed that there is a super deep band of ammonia around Jupiter's equator that goes as deep as Juno can see. You see, astronomers previously thought that gases would be mixed and uniform below the top of the clouds, but Juno proved that completely wrong, and the bands of stripes go much deeper than believed depending on where you look. Scott Bolton, principal investigator of NASA's Juno mission says, the naive simple view of giant planets is that as soon as you scratch beneath the surface where the sunlight was no longer getting to, then everything would just be this boring well-mixed sphere of gas that all looked the same. And Jupiter is anything but that. It's complicated." End quote. So Juno has made incredible discoveries, and it's still not done yet. The spacecraft is set to make its next flyby on February 7th. And after that, it has flybys on April 1st, May 24th, and July 26th, which is the last flyby that the mission is currently budgeted for. After that flyby in July, NASA will decide whether to extend the mission or not. Ultimately, once the Juno mission is complete, the spacecraft will deorbit and burn up in Jupiter's atmosphere, ending an incredible discovery-filled expedition. So you see, we're not as stuck as we might feel when we're staring up at the night sky. Because of Juno, we have just surfed the clouds of Jupiter. We saw the magnificent planet up close and listened to the sounds of its dancing auroras through the convenience of a mobile device. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe. See you on our next journey.